take a deep breath. Thank you so much. Let's pray. Oh God, after 50 years, keep preaching today through your servant. In Christ I come. Amen. Now before I get into that pulpit up there, I want to acknowledge that over the last 50 years there have been many who have gotten that pulpit and have served here as pastors and so I know you've stood up quite a bit already. But I'm going to just ask, if you served as a pastor here over the last 50 years, I'd like you to stand up, if you would be so kind. Friends, I'd like us to give these men a hand. Thank you for your presence today and for your past service to Kingdom Building here at Smithville Midnight. Your legacy lives on every Sunday we meet here. And I am, I am proud to get in that pulpit where so many dignified men of God have stood in the past. So thank you. Now without any preachers here, if I don't get up in that pulpit, one of them is going to get up here and start preaching. So, we better get down to the sermon. Now, if you have your Bibles, you'll need them. And in fast order this morning, because I'm going to preach a little bit differently. I'm going to preach shotgun style. There's going to be several scriptures coming at you. If you are a little overwhelmed by opening your Bible and trying to get there, okay, just camp on these first scriptures that I'm going to give you, and the rest you can look up when you get home. You'll also see your outline, which is embedded in that fabulous bulletin with the photo montage on the front. And what I'd like us to do right now is read the point together. The point is in the form of a question that I would like us to ponder this morning. Let's read the point together, shall we? The point. What does it mean to be a church that turns 50? What does it mean to be a church that turns 50? Now, I have only been here three of the last 50 years. But I feel that I have identified five things that after talking to folks who have been here from the start and seeing five consistent threads that may begin to answer that question, what does it mean to be a church that turns 50? So what does it mean to be? Your first fill in the blank is an F. It's the word faithful. I believe to be a church that turns 50, we need to be faithful. Well, to what? What do we need to be faithful to? I believe we need to be faithful to the Word of God. And I've got two texts for you this morning. The two greats of the gospel that Jesus gives us. If you'd be so kind to open your Bibles to Matthew 28 first. Matthew 28. Matthew, Mark, and John. Matthew is the first book in the New Testament. And this is one of the greats that Jesus gives us. And see, I'm even going to look them up too. It's a plenty of time. Matthew 28 is way at the end of Matthew. Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Are you there yet? You're allowed to say amen. amen. Okay, here we go. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Some of you know this by heart. Follow along as I read. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Of course, we know that as the great <laughs> commission. Over the last three years, uh, we have experienced 
growth. And folks say, how, how, how much has your church grown? Since 05, our worship experience here, uh, we had an average attendance of 132. Now as of 09, we have an average worship attendance of 185. And they say, how have you uh, experienced this growth? Why is this happening? I believe there are two reasons that we have grown. One is the Holy Spirit is doing something. The Holy Spirit is doing something beyond anything I can do, beyond anything we can do. The Holy Spirit has ordained a season of growth for SMC. And I'm going to be very careful to give Him praise for it. But I think there's also uh, the faithfulness to Matthew 28 that we see. You folks go out and you invite your family and your friends to come to church. Your co-workers, you say, hey, come to my church this Sunday. Check out what's going on there. You're being faithful to Matthew 28 when you do that. But what's the other great? The other great we find in Matthew 22. If you'd like to flip over a few pages to Matthew 22. Verses 37 through 40. Matthew 22. Verses 37 through 40. We know Matthew 22, 37 through 40 as the great commandment. That was a little weak. Try it again. The great commandment. I know how I can sing. So don't be afraid to yell out during the sermon. Here we go. Matthew 22, 38 through 40. 37 through 40. I'm sorry. Thank you. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is this, like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. The great commandment. When people arrive here, you folks love them. When people show up, you show that you love God in your worship, and you're ready to love them. That's being faithful to Matthew 22. The next word on our outline is innovative. Innovative. How so? Well, there's a text I'd like you to look up. It's 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 23. 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 23. Remember, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts of the Apostles, Romans 2. Corinthians. I know you're busy looking up the reference. I'm just sitting up here. 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 23. 